I'm writing from the same place rhythmically as I would write lyrics, but I'm actually learning as I mature as a poet to look for the rhythm in a different place, to understand the musicality of language on the page as a different thing to the musicality of language that you sing or speak. I am interested in patterns and sequences. Uh, I'm really taken by repetition. I find it endlessly re recurring and repeating in my work. I'm always coming back to this idea of how to break cycles or how to acknowledge and find peace with cycles. There's a heavy morphology around the power of those numbers and those sequences. And I'm not really invested in, in the maths of it. I just find that that, that particular description is extremely poignant to me, divisible by itself and one. Quite often when I hear a phrase that doesn't belong to poetry, but belongs to something like maths, I find them so beautifully poetic. I've just been taken by that phrase for a long time. And when I was thinking about these poems, the way it happens is the poems start coming out they begin to group themselves around certain themes. Then you realise, oh, I might have a collection on my hands rather than just little poems that are occurring. And at that point, usually in the process, the title will appear or, you know, you'll, you'll find a title that feels right. And then at that point, you start to really know what the collection wants to be and where it goes. The thing that drove me really to think, oh, uh, I've got something here that I want to I wanna stick with was this idea of form. Like, I work in musical form all the time. Lyricism, I learnt through the ear. I learnt it through listening to other um, lyricists, storytellers, rappers, MCs. That's how I learned about my bass level rhythm, which is like inside my body. And often when I come to writing poetry, I'm writing from the same place rhythmically as I would write lyrics. But I'm actually learning as I mature as a poet to look for the rhythm in a different place, to understand the musicality of language on the page as a different thing to the musicality of language that you sing or speak. I was always interested in formal poetry, but I wasn't, um, it wasn't kind of a gut-led interest. It was a passing interest that was more, because I thought, I suppose I was supposed to be interested in that way. But now it occurs to me in a completely different way. The like experience of communicating directly with somebody will transform any text. Like any any words, the minute you're actually speaking them to a person, everything changes. I can sit here and I can read these words and I can imagine somebody at home listening, and it will change the dynamic of how I perform it. But actually, if there were people in this room and I was reading it to them, it would be a there would be a, a kind of physiological response in me in them. There would be some connection that gets made that informs. Everything, the dynamics, the flow, my nerves, their nerves. I haven't thought of this experience as being anything like the experience of, yeah, a performance, giving a performance. So in terms of like the voice and the experience of the poems coming to life, what I can say is that they're, they exist in different places. The poem is the poem. It comes from where it comes, I don't know where it comes from, the same place music comes from, I imagine, this like other place. You get the first kind of scent of it and then you put it through all the rigorous discipline of what you've learned in your life as a poet. And then it lives on the page, it's a book. Luckily and beautifully it's published. And then it finds somebody where they're at. I don't know anything about who or what or when or why. In the moment that a person then not me, but a person finds it, reads it, that's the moment when it has a meaning and, yeah, a vitality that creates connection. So if I'm working on poems, I like to be at home. Home feels good for that. I don't necessarily mean in my house, I just mean, like, stationed in one place, like, rooted. I like to write in notebooks with a pen, 
I enjoy the initial play of um, this pen and paper and just following it, see where it goes. In the collection, you've got this combination of these like kind of like margin to margin, like outpourings, kind of one breath, one sentence, like splurges of like kind of multi voiced inside someone's thought process and then you go to their speech and you don't really know and th that's a kind of truthful experience of the world that I have I feel like those poems are more truthful in terms of trying to capture the experience of the feeling and then the more formal ones are interesting to me because through the artifice of putting words into those rhythms and into that meter, you create a different kind of truth. It's different. You use the artifice to create a, a deeper sense of truth. But poetry, it, I think it, yeah, it comes to me. We go back to this thing about solitude and being on your own with the poem. You have to create space to just be together, like when there's not a million things being asked of you. The poem, once the poem's finished, the poem's got nothing to do with me, even. Like, you put everything into it, and you work on it, and you work with it, but when it's done, it's done. It's not, your, it's not yours anymore. It was never yours in the first place. I don't know where it fucking comes from. I, I don't know. All I know is how hard I have to work to accommodate it when it comes. Where it comes from and where it's going to go, you don't have any say in that. Like, if you begin the poem with its end in mind, You've already killed the poem. You've limited everything about what it could be or where it could go or like what, what its identity wants to be. I'm gonna sit down and write about this. I'm, it's not like that. That's not how it is. You just have to, you have to listen and you have to follow. And at some point you start to leave. At some point you say to the poem, listen, now you listen to me. Like, at some point that happens and then off it goes.